Hey, it's Alexa. One of the projects I had at an internship involved translating an existing code base from PHP to JavaScript. I mostly worked on rewriting backend scripts that called APIs, manipulated data, and automated scheduled tasks on a server. At first, I thought this would be mindless busy work. I figure JavaScript and PHP are pretty similar because they're both primarily used for backend web development, and I would just have to translate the syntax between the languages. However, this actually wasn't the case, and probably for the better because you don't want to be bored during an internship. I found that the strengths of one language were often the weaknesses of the other. Let's talk about some of the most annoying parts of PHP and JavaScript. Starting with PHP, let's talk about PHP arrays. PHP arrays are not arrays. They're key value pairs, and this is similar to a JavaScript map or object. This may seem like a tiny distinction to begin with, but you can declare PHP arrays like their list as well as like their maps. So oftentimes, this made it hard to understand if the array was being used as a list or as a map. And I feel like I was just used to that distinction in JavaScript because logically, arrays and maps are used for different things. It would be easier to decode if they were separated. PHP extract function is the devil. Basically what it does is it takes in an array and creates variables with the variable name being the key and the value being the value. So this seems very convenient at first, but only when you know the contents of the array. Imagine using this function on the result of a database or API call. You could have thousands of keys and therefore you're creating thousands of variables in your file. And this results in tons of problems like variable collision, security risk, especially if you're extracting user input, and code readability. Often I would find myself seeing these variables used in the code, but I didn't know where they were coming from. And most of the time they were coming from that PHP extract. And I feel that JavaScript destructuring does a much better job at minimizing these risks. PHP require has similar problems. This function is basically the equivalent of copying pasting code from one file into another file. This means you have the potential to import random variables and for them to collide with your current variables. And I really wasn't used to this because in JavaScript, you have to specify what you want to export and that export is enclosed. So the contents aren't in a global scope when you import it. There's obviously some PHP language quirks, but there are also a ton of JavaScript ones. Formatting dates is so hard in JavaScript, I don't know why, but the simplest looking line of PHP code gives you a two digit month, a two digit day, and a four digit year. And replicating this in JavaScript requires five lines of code, Obviously, I could squish it into probably two, but that makes it just unreadable. And this is the cleanest method I found using the two locale string method. I didn't want to have to add one to the month because JavaScript months are zero indexed. And I didn't want to have to worry about appending a zero for single digit numbers. So if you find a better native way to format JavaScript dates, please let me know. Another thing about PHP that I missed in JavaScript was the tons of built-ins PHP has for specifically web development. So if I wanted to filter and validate an email in PHP, all I would have to do is bring in that filter validate email constant. But in JavaScript, I have this strange regex that comes from the internet. And please don't copy regex from the internet. You've got to build it yourself and test it to make sure it actually works for your use cases. So that was a little bit annoying. I'm not saying both of these languages are bad or you shouldn't learn them or you shouldn't use them in your projects. But I think what we can learn from this is that most of these problems relate to programmers' decisions. For example, if you're a PHP programmer, you probably should not be using extract if multiple people are working on your code. It makes it horrible for readability. I feel the translation process gave me a deeper understanding of programming languages and the aspects to consider when choosing a particular one. 
It also made me realize that I had to prioritize writing clean code rather than having that seemingly clever solution. So hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.